Hello, welcome to the Selfie Millennial live stream. Um, I'm so glad to have Angelica here with me today. Um, she is a career changer who took a leap to work in human resources, which was a big shift from her previous roles, which include being a member experience associate, a receptionist, a 911 radio dispatcher. And so now she's uh, an HR coordinator for Assemble HR. And it has been an absolute pleasure getting to know you because you have been a part of several of my private programs and you you really have taken this stuff to the next level in that um, you really had, you joined my program, LinkedIn for Thought Leaders, and not only made the leap into this new career path in human resources, but you also became an HR influencer in the process. Like it's incredible. Um, and so how does someone with limited HR experience become a, a thought leader, become a voice for this career path and build such an incredible HR community? We are going to dive into all of that today because it's really great stuff. So I just wanna say Angelica, welcome. Thank you so much much for having me, Madeline. I'm happy to be here. Yeah. And so I want to jump back mm -hmm. to when you first decided to make a career change. And I know you posted uh, something on LinkedIn, and I want to read, read a quote from what you said. You said, my journey into HR has been anything but linear, traditional or easy. It was downright hard. There were many times I felt lost. There were many times I hit walls and closed doors, there were many times I questioned myself and my abilities. And when I read this, the voice of so many people who are switching careers, who are making a career pivot, mm -hmm. I feel like this is such a common sentiment. And so can you expand a bit about what has, what, what was so difficult about making this career transition? Yeah. So I think, you know, when you're talking about career transitions, sometimes it's hard to find the information. So for human resources, it felt like there was a lot of information out there about, you know, general career changes. If you just want to ch change careers, you know, start doing X, Y, and Z. But with human resources, I found that it was very different. There was almost, it almost felt like, you know, there, there were these doors that were not open at times and it became very frustrating at times to figure out how to get them to open. And, you know, that's kind of why I decided to really just start learning. So I'm somebody who really loves to learn, even, you know, about LinkedIn. I come from a single mother household and um, I'm a first generation college graduate. And so I never used LinkedIn. I, I had heard of it when I was in college and I'm like, oh, that sounds kind of, I don't know, I'm not interested. And then when I was coming out of my graduate program, I'm like, oh, wow, job searching is not how I remember it being, you know, where I just apply on a job board and somebody will, you know, get back to me. This was very different. And so I decided to use LinkedIn and, it, you know, it was an experience. It definitely taught me a lot about how to navigate this career change in the best way possible. Yes. And you... When you were making this career change, I think that's such a good point of, did you send in some resumes for HR positions and get like no traction? Was it kind of like a stark difference to some of your previous job searches? Oh yeah. So I had started sending in resumes even before the pandemic hit. And one of the things that I remember being told by a recruiter is, well, I don't understand what your experience has to do with HR. And I was like, oh, okay. So you know, that was a kind of a big wake up call for me in that, you know, not everybody's going to take the time to translate your experience into HR speak or language or jargon. And, you know, it, it was a very different experience. And I even started applying right when I began LinkedIn. And yeah, I was not gaining any traction. And so you then really started investing in LinkedIn and you joined my LinkedIn for Thought Leaders program. And what was it like going through that program, what what were some of the things that were the, the major shifts you made? Yeah, so, you know, LinkedIn for Thought Leaders, it's, it's more than just, you know, growing 
a following, you know, yeah, that's cool, but really it's about your community. And that's what really struck me through this program was really understanding who you are and what you are about in, in whatever you want to do, whether it's HR or another field, but really understanding, you know, why you're called to this field, but also how you can communicate that with others. And so that's what, you know, LinkedIn for Thought Leaders really taught me. And what stuck out to me was understanding how to communicate your message, understanding why you want to communicate that message and not just, you know, communicating it for no reason and building community. So really engaging with people. Um, you know, it's important when you're building a community to not just take, 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 but to give and, you know, to really engage with other people and to want to know them on a deeper level. You do this so well. And I do think it, it is a, it is complete mindset shift because I think when we are job seekers, we are in this kind of like fight or flight mode of we need mm -hmm. to make things happen quickly. And so I can't be building thought leadership. I can't be helping others because I just need to be asking, hey, can I get this interview? Hey, can you review my resume? And um, it ends up feeling very transactional where mm -hmm. the way you approached it was very authentic. And it's amazing the people who have gravitated towards you. I'm, I'm going to give kind of a spoiler here for later in the interview, but just, you know, the number of podcast interviews you get and uh, you being asked to be even a podcast host of, of, a, of, a, of a whole series. It's just incredible. And could you, because one of the first things you did, and, and correct me if I'm wrong if it's not one of the first things, is you really built out Transition uh, transition Tuesday, Transition Thursday. Um, yeah. And tell me about that and how you really were able to build community around that initiative. Yeah. So, you know, I, I found that when trying to find human resources, you know, information on how to transition, there really wasn't any. And I decided to just start creating videos for Transition Tip Thursdays, um, which will be starting again soon, um, to really help people understand like what, how you do this, but not just from somebody who, you know, did this a million years ago, but for somebody who's doing it now. And so that's why I decided to start that was to really help people, you know, be part of my journey because it's, it's not easy. It's not perfect. It's not, sometimes you will to hit those walls. You will sometimes fail. There will be uncomfortable situations or learning experiences. And so I wanted to share that with people. Yeah, that's so super cool. And I think what you did there is you said, I have something to share which doesn't mean that I am, you know, an expert, 20 years, HR, executive, whatnot. No, you said, I have this, this information is what I would like to have heard from, from me like six months ago or me a year ago or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And you're now being that mentor, that relationship builder to those who are a few steps behind you, which I think is a really powerful mentality uh, that I certainly really reinforce in, for a lot of people who are building thought leadership is that the barrier to entry, the ability to build community is actually a lot of times being that person who is relatable and who's taking us along for their yeah. journey. And I do want to dive in a little bit more to, um, to how, like, because truly, would you agree with the statement that like really one of the best ways to land a job is through relationships? Would you say so? Yeah. I mean, before I probably would have said no, you know, I, I always thought that, oh, you just apply on Indeed or, or, you know, job boards and somebody will get back to you. But truly I've learned this, through this experience and through using LinkedIn that a lot of things happen behind the scenes that you're not aware of. And it can mean that really awesome job. And so, yeah, relationships do help you get jobs. And so if you could break it down for folks, because I really, you know, I talk about LinkedIn for thought leaders and how it's, it's a great way to build relationships. When people think about like building relationships, they either think walking into a room in a networking event, mm -hmm. or they think of, oh, I need to cold email people and ask them to do things for me. When you think about the authentic, meaningful relationships you've built through this journey, what does that actually look like? Yeah, so I think it's just, you know, like you said earlier, it's reframing your mindset. So, you know, being in the job search, it is very fight or flight. You are 
feeling like I need to ask these people to help me, but it's really retraining yourself to think, how can I help you? And, you know, doing that within boundaries, obviously, you want to make sure that you are taking care of yourself as well. But for me, it was about really understanding the person that I'm talking to, whether that's looking their, their podcasts up and listening to them, um, commenting on those posts about their podcasts, but really just acting like it's a conversation versus, you know, a, a transaction that needs to be done so that you can get ahead. I think it's more of, you know, I want to get to know you. I want to know, you know, what you're doing in your life and how I can help you. Yes. And that's been so cool. And because you have built all of this great thought leadership, I mean, I see it popping up all the time. You're leading clubhouse rooms. You're appearing on podcasts. You are having your own people on your transition Thursdays, all this stuff. And what a great excuse to contact people, right? <laughs> like to just be like, hey, I now have a reason to reach out to you and just build an authentic relationship versus being, you know, the hundredth person to email them saying, hey, I want to work at your company. Please pass along my resume or whatnot, mm -hmm. which, you know, that's better than nothing. It's better than just applying online. So, uh, so there's, there's layers here, but I think that really you doing this approach has been so fun to see, um, and really see you skyrocket your presence and also your influence. And so what has been the biggest breakthrough you've had be, like since, since joining the program, it's funny. Cause like for me on the outside looking in, I see so much, but I'm sure it's also been a gradual journey. Like I, I think we can, we can very, very easily say that this is like, this is, this is this. Um, but what would you say has been the biggest breakthrough for you? Yeah. So I think the biggest breakthrough is just, you know, that mindset shift again, it's, it's checking yourself that, this isn't really about what you can get from other people, but it's about how you can build community. And that's something that's really stuck out to me is, you know, being supportive of other people and, and really wanting to be a part of their journey because we're all on journeys. We all are on different paths and we all want that community. It's human nature. We want that support. And so I think the biggest breakthrough for me was just releasing you know, LinkedIn for Thought Leaders taught me how to look at LinkedIn as less of a strategy and more of showing up as a human being, which is nice. Um, and so, you know, just building that community and really helping people know that you're there for them, not for that job, not because you need something, but because you want to be there and support them and cheer them on and, and be um, a part of their journey and learn from them as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I've seen people who then go out on this journey on their own and they start posting on LinkedIn and they get really discouraged because just there's getting, they're getting no views on their posts. They're getting no likes because they don't really understand what LinkedIn favors, right? Like what mm -hmm. LinkedIn is actually going to push out into the, the network. And so um, it is also great when I see people, you know, who before were trying really hard to do the exact things you were doing, but completely just being like, why? why is no one discovering me? And then you just make some of these changes mm -hmm. and you understand the mechanics of LinkedIn and then boom, it like switches on and the reach is so much more. Um, so what would you say uh, if you were to give some advice to someone considering LinkedIn thought leadership, what, what, what advice would you give them? Yeah, really just be you. I think it's so important to really know who you are. And, you know, we're all changing. Life is changing. And so, but really have a, a better idea of who you are, what you offer, whether that's HR or, you know, your own business and really stand strong in that message because, you know, we're all unique beings. We all have something to offer. And it's important that we stay true to our authentic voice because that is going to come through on LinkedIn. People can tell if you are emulating someone or if you're being your true self and if they don't they may see that when they speak to you one-on-one -on -one. and it's like whoa there's a big difference here between who i thought was on linkedin and who i'm seeing in front of me so mm -hmm. my biggest you know advice is to be yourself to own it not everybody is going to like it and that's okay you have to find your people yes and i think uh i, I love 
that you can kind of speak to this from the perspective of the job seeker, because in my LinkedIn for Thought Leaders program, there are consultants, there are business owners, there are you know people who have their own side hustles. There's people from all different uh, aspects of what they're trying to get out of LinkedIn. And sometimes when I talk to people who are interested in doing this thought leadership route, who are job seekers, they're like, but will this work for me? How does this make sense for job seekers? And so um, I know a lot of job seekers are afraid of posting on LinkedIn because someone is going to see it and think that they're job seeking. And so what, it, what would you say to the job seeker who's like, oh, thought leadership, that isn't for a job seeker. I need to be focused on applying to roles. I would say that, you know, roles will come and go, but your thought leadership will always be there. And that is what's going to open those roles for you. At the end of the day, I've, I've realized that, you know, your thoughts and your knowledge are very valuable. And if you're not sharing them, then they're perishing. And, you know, even if you are a job seeker, if somebody thinks you're looking for a job because you're sharing knowledge, then maybe that's a sign that you should look elsewhere. Um, I think, you know, companies should want their employees to share their knowledge, share what they're learning, because that's going to help with their employer branding. So, you know, yeah, your thought leadership will open those roles, roles that maybe you didn't ever consider for yourself before. I completely agree. And what the thing is, is that now that you have started this journey and you have landed an amazing role in HR, you didn't stop your thought leadership. Mm -hmm. And so now it's, <laughs> if anyone was to ever perceive you being on the job market again, it would be impossible because that's just a part of your routine. It's a part of your ongoing maintenance for your personal branding. And so while it feels, I think that the starting is feels the weirdest for people. And mm -hmm. it's often in a moment in their life when they're realizing, wow, I could do something more. I could have a better career. I could have a better business. I could, I want something more for my life. And so it feels kind of jolting, but then once you get it going, yeah, there's, I, I, I mean, am I right? Like, will you ever probably stop kind of keeping this, this, this journey of giving back and, and contributing your thoughts and, and building community? No, you know, I think, yeah, you said, yeah, in the beginning, it's awkward. It can feel very anxiety producing, you know, will people, you know, I don't know, like if I'm posting the right thing, quote unquote, but, um, you know, once you get in the hang of it and once you start figuring out who you are, your authentic voice, what you have to say, it just becomes second nature. And yeah, I, I don't believe that I will ever stop creating content. You know, there's ways to make content even when you're in a job. Share what you're learning in your job if you're allowed to, of course. Um, share what you're learning about yourself in a job. Share some of the obstacles that you have been facing because people, people need to know that they're not alone. And I think that's the biggest thing. Absolutely. So anyone listening, we have a lot of really great comments in the chat of that, uh, you know, this is a great topic. This is where I'm at right now, says Amalia. Um, interesting subject. Thanks for sharing, says Fernando. Um, so if anyone is interested in getting some uh, like getting like a free class in this topic. Um, I'll, I've linked that in the description of this video. I've also linked if, if you all want to go straight into the full course, I've also linked that as well. Um, but Angelica, where can we find you and what you, what are you working on these days? Yeah. So you can find me here on LinkedIn. If you're on clubhouse, I do two rooms, one on Wednesdays at 6 PM and one on Saturday called let's talk HR at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. And I am also a part of the community called Latinas Rising Up in HR, and we are launching a podcast soon. So keep your eyes out if that's something you're interested in. Fantastic. Well, thanks so much for coming on the channel. And I got to send you away with a Wi-Fi high five. Wi-Fi high five.